Good evening. Um, so I, I work with Animesh in the same lab out of IBM's uh, Silicon Valley office. We uh, spend a lot of our time on cloud technology, have for about hmm, seven plus years now. Um, and uh, Animesh asked me if I uh, wouldn't mind speaking tonight. And uh, I thought about it for a minute, and then I went back to about a month ago, and I thought, well, he sent me this email about a month ago saying that uh, coming here made you hot on Twitter. Um, so here we go. Uh, sounded good to me. So um, what, what, I, what I thought I'd share with you is, uh, and it was actually inspired by one of the, one of the questions I saw in the, uh, in the uh, agenda for tonight, was uh, more what, what we think is happening in, in 2015. Uh, I'd have to say for, for Cloud Foundry itself, it's pretty hard to beat what's happened this year. Right? Uh, 2014. Uh, went through major releases, a lot of maturity in the code, huge adoption, you know, two if not three x growth in the size of the community, um, and you know we're, we're pretty excited to have to have been a small part of that um, on the IBM side. Um, when we look ahead to you know what's going to happen in 2015, we're going to go from you know probably a lot of our customers or a lot of you know what I consider traditional IT adopters kind of toying with these technologies or trying to figure out how to deploy new applications or learning the new way of agile development, figuring out what a PaaS is really about, um, they're going to get serious next year. Right? This, is, this, is, this is a year where we actually think you know, you've got a number of, of vendors uh, launching platforms like what we just heard about um, with Staccato, you know, IBM Bluemix. Uh, you'll see things from HP. I mean, you're going to see cloud platforms become a fairly mainstream supported concept in 2015. Uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about Cloud Foundry to us is that it radically has simplified the application lifecycle. Now what we sort of noticed is, well, not everything is necessarily what we consider an application. Um, so in the last few months, we've been spending a little more time figuring out, well, how are we going to radically simplify the rest of it? Right? And then how are we going to make it cooperate with Cloud Foundry? Is Cloud Foundry sort of what we consider to be one of the smartest things we've seen as far as really changing the application programming and service binding model? Right? And so for those of you that haven't used it, has anybody here not used it yet? Just curious. Cloud Foundry, not used it? One, two, three. Come on, you can admit it. This is not a moment of shame. This is a good thing. You've got all these people here. They're going to help you with that. All right. So if you haven't used it yet, I mean, this is, this is one of those push, push a button, push a script, go, oh, OK. Um, yeah, it is about automation. A lot of this is about automation. Um, so one of the things that amazed me when we first started looking at this as, a, as you know, Cloud Foundry as a, as a foundation for IBM's platform as a service. I mean, this was a big deal, right? We, we had lots of stuff. We could have invented ourselves. We looked at this and we thought, this is a pretty simple architecture. Right? I'm doing stuff that was really freaking hard back in the early days of Java, right? It's like I had to do all these JNDI lookups and all this craziness, and then if I did it in another language, I had to find drivers. And it made it really, really simple for people to pick a language they liked and bind it to a whole bunch of services in a catalog. We thought, this is good. This is simple, and there's lots of people behind it. And it made the life cycle of the app really easy. It made binding to services really easy. Well, what do you think might get simpler in 2015? Well, now there's all those poor people who have to build all those services. What are they going to do, right? So, and that's actually where we kind of looked at, you know, technologies like Docker and, and where the life cycle is different. And I completely agree with everything I just kind of saw that when we look at, you know, what a typical app developer should do, you'd kind of be crazy to build all the stuff in those slides, right? 2015 is going to be, well, what are all the service developers going to do, right? And what do we want to make easier there? So we've started doing a lot of experimentation, combining Cloud Foundry together with Docker and providing different life cycles for the service side. The much longer running things, how do you build microservices? How do you refactor those long running things, those stateful things, and then build them in such a way that they naturally complement being brought into Cloud Foundry services? So, um, this is my token plug. If you go look, about two weeks ago, we, uh, we announced a partnership with IBM and Docker about bringing 
uh, kind of putting more weight behind using Docker for the microservices community. We put up a beta of it. Um, love to hear your feedback on it, because we actually think these two technologies together are going to greatly simplify a huge number of life cycle things that a lot of us spent the better part of our careers doing. And if we're not good CS and engineering people, you know, our goal is usually automate ourselves out of a job, right? So 2015, we'll have finished apps with Cloud Foundry, we'll have finished services. I'm not even going to guess what 2016 is going to bring. Maybe we'll automate the life cycle itself. But uh, again, thanks. Been a really exciting year. Um, and uh, I guess most of you missed, except for maybe one or two of you, that, that this was a holiday party. And uh, I also missed that as well. It was, I apologize. But uh, happy holidays to all of you. And uh, we're looking forward to 2015.